Thank you for joining me in this video here. Um, today we're going to talk about just React Native. Um, we're also going to talk about Socket.io and uh, Express with Node.js. Now the main point about this is to get using Socket.io to be able to communicate real-time data from a, a web app to a phone app. And I'm on my Mac today, so I'm going to use my iPhone. I have my iPhone simulator up right here. And I got some docs ready to go. And we're just going to get right into it. So first things first, when I go to React Natives, their site, you can see they're on 0.46. Uh, they kind of explain me how to get ready. So npm install, tag G, create React Native app. And so then we just run this in the command line, go into the project, type npm start. So I already had created my project here, so I'm going to open it up here, and um, and I'm just going to write npm start. Now React Native has come a long way. They're doing some really cool things. Um, they have this app called Expo, which I have installed here on my simulator. So you just open up Expo, and um, you'll you'll see how to get to the app loaded on your simulator soon. This takes a little bit of time, so just be patient as it uh, starts to build up. Now you can see here, there's like a QR code here, which is pretty cool. So it says here, uh, when you're running your app, basically install the Expo client app on your iOS or Android phone and connect to the same wireless network as your computer. Using the Expo app, scan the QR code from your terminal to open your project, which is really cool. Um, so you don't have to have your phone plugged into your computer. But in this case, I'm not going to use my real phone, so I'm going to show you guys using the simulator. So once I get uh, Expo installed, you can go to the Expo docs and figure out how to install it on the simulator. It's really simple, but um, I'm just going to open up port 19. Basically, I'm going to open up this right here. So I already have it actually saved here. Um, so I would just click on that, and it will open up my app. Then it will open up a new tab here in Chrome, which is for the debugger. So you can actually set up to debug all kinds of stuff. Now, the debugger doesn't show anything in the page itself. So what you would have to do is open up your uh, console, the developer's console in the debugger, which is on Macintosh, it's command option J. So there's a bunch of stuff in here, you can just clear it out, it's not a big deal. Uh, but you see our app loaded up, it's looking pretty good. Um, it says open up app.js, start working on your app. And so we'll go ahead and open up app.js, take a look at it, and we're going to do some modifying in here. Basically the main thing that I want to do is, um, this is not a beginning tutorial to React Native, but I will kind of show you some entry stuff. So for anybody who doesn't know, state is how uh, these, how React Native manages data and rendering on the screen. So if state changes, if you use the right methods to change state, it'll re-render the screen. So I'm going to create a variable called state instead of equal to an object here, and I'm just going to put name. And in name I'm going to put Bob. Um, not a big deal. And you can see auto reloads here, which is really nice. Um, and then I'm going to build a constructor method here. Now with constructor methods, you always have to call super. Uh, it's just by default, it's in the documentation, and uh, you can read all about that. So what I want to do is I want to print out their state, basically the name out to the screen. I'm going to delete all this stuff and put this.state.name, and you just put that in curly braces, and that's how uh, it'll read from the class that it's in. It takes a little while sometimes. So we got Bob here on the screen. Nothing fancy. What I'm going to do here is uh, open up a new terminal because I'm going to show you how to get uh, Socket.io installed. And um, so in here I found a little article. It's hard, kind of hard to find because there's a React Socket.io but I didn't really like that module so this guy's talking about Socket.io client. So you just npm install Socket.io client here. And uh, we're going to do a tech tech save on that so it'll save to our package.json. And then what he's going to do is import React Native, but we already have that done. Assign window.user agent 
to React Native, and then import Socket.io Socket client. So we have to import this before we, sorry, assign this user agent before we actually import the script. So that's important to understand. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take this here. Now up here with the imports, we're just going to put it the very next line. And then we're going to uh, import our Socket.io client. Now I found one issue, and I'm going to show you what it is. Well, really, he, he didn't explain the whole import, but you got to do um, sign up a variable, and then this has to be a string. So essentially, this would be uh, where the Socket.io client lives. Um, it's actually not even done installing yet, but uh, and then this would this is how you would set up Socket.io client. So we put that in our constructor. So this will this will uh, connect our Socket.io client. I'm not going to use port 3001 though. I'm going to use port 3000. As you can see, we have an error here. Um, so we can reload. It says unable to find module Socket.io client slash Socket.io. So if we reload here, uh, we still get the same issue. Uh, so what happened was I was looking through the node modules here and if you go all the way down there's a lot of them and you just look for socket.io client and you can see that in socket.io client there's no file here called socket.io but in dist there is socket writes some kind of importing or requiring of a script um, and it's not being able to find it, just go to the node modules and see what's even there and see if, if it's in there and just correct the path. So it's really simple to do that. Um, so we're going to fix that here and we're going to reload. Now one of the thing is I've noticed that uh, I'm using the latest version of NPM so sometimes I have a problem with reloading completely. So if you ever have that you can just restart the whole project. Sometimes you even have to go into your um, your terminal here and restart the whole packager because it's still looking for socket.io client slash socket.io so we'll go ahead and start the, uh, the entire client again go back to expo home wait for it to load up and then we're going to try it again so it says right here using npm version 5.2 there may be bugs in this version use your own risk we recommend version 4.6.1 I just didn't feel like switching. I actually tried using MVM, for anyone who doesn't know it's Node Version Manager, to switch my NPM version, but it, there's a bug in that too, so it just, it still thinks I'm using the latest version of NPM, and so it still has problems. But, <laughs> so we got it working, um, it's back up and running, we're going to just run the app again, and hopefully everything works with no errors. And if it stalls out like this, press Command D. And, and it should bring up this menu, you can hit refresh. So you can see it's finally loaded in here. So if you don't see that building JavaScript bundle, then uh, it's not loading correctly and so just hit command D alright so we're back on our app you can just click on that to dismiss alright so what we did was can we connect to the socket uh, JSONP is false it's just for safety measures JSONP uh, is just a way to pass data kinda of secure way but we don't need that um, and so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna create a server with Node.js and Express um, Definitely not in here. Okay. So we'll just create a folder called server, and then in this folder, uh, this folder I'm gonna put a file called app.js, and put a another file called index.html. So that'll be our HTML file that we're gonna see when we load up our server. And now I'm just gonna put this welcome here. Um, just an H1 tag, nothing special. So for app.js, I'm, I'm going to load up, basically I'm going to go to socket.io, if you go to socket.io at the address, uh, you'll get a way of implementing socket.io with Express, the latest version of Express.
So let's go to docs here. And this is using node HTTP server. This is with the latest version of Express. I just usually just copy this and bring it over here and save it. Now the only thing is I want to change here is I, I want to break out Express on two different variables. Because we're going to need to use Express as well as App as two different variables, essentially. And send file is deprecated, so we have to use send file with a camel case here. Um, and then I, I just want to remove these uh, socket events. I just want this cleared out. So this is our socket areas where all the events are going to happen. Um, so now that we got our basic server here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new terminal here and just run the server. And then we're going to connect to it. So node app.js, and that should have our server running. Oh, got an error, right. We don't have our modules installed, so we got an npm i socket io. Real quick. Okay, so I just paused the video real quick and then um, it had it installed. So now that we got it socket io installed, um, I would install Express. Normally you'd have to install Express, but I have it Express globally, so I don't have to install it locally. So we'll go ahead and run our server here. Um, and we can see, actually, they're using port 80. So I forgot to change the port here. I want to change it to 3000. So we got that port set up and we'll just run the server here. Oops. So our server's running. And our new tab, we're just going to go localhost 3000. And then we should see welcome show up in H1 tag. There we go. So we got welcome showing up, that's good to go. Um, now the next thing we want to do here is, I, I just want to create a button on this page and what I'm going to do is um, have that send a signal to socket.io to update our app. So you can see how that works in real time. So I'm going to create a button, update, and just create update. And then I'm going to create a script tag. And then I'm going to do button equals document dot get what do we do with a query selector? Query selector, and we'll do button here, and button dot on click equals function. And we'll just console.log is for now to make sure our button works. And then, so we'll go refresh this page, open up our terminal here. So we got a terminal here, and we click update, it worked. So cool. So our button worked, which is great. Um, and then what we're going to do is we just need to bring a socket to IO here. So we'll bring script, source, and we'll do socket dot, oops, sorry, we have forward slash socket dot IO slash socket dot IO dot JS. So that'll bring socket IO. It's already been served up for us, and we're going to connect it to in variable IO, or we'll just call it socket actually, equals IO. And then we just call the IO function, and that's that's about it. How how it takes to get socket IO set up. So we're going to use the emit method here. We're just going to emit update. So in our app.js, our server, we're going to do a socket on update. And I'm going to use some ES6 syntax here. All I'm going to do is IO emit update. So I'm going to emit update to everybody who's connected to this socket. Um, our phone should be connected to the socket already, and we can tell that um, basically if I do console.log socket.id, oops, then I can see what sockets are connected. So I want to refresh my server here, then anybody who connects to the server, you see there's one connected already, and two connected. So that one of them is our phone, one of them is our web app. So they're on auto refresh of connecting. So um, we'll dismiss this here, and then in our app.js, our phone app, this is our phone app. Um, what I want to do is this.socket, oops, this.socket to on update, and I'm going to just call that function here. And then what I want to do is this.setState, and we'll just set name to 
Nate. So this will set the state to Nate, sorry, the name on our state to Nate. And this is just a callback function. So whenever so emit, the update gets emitted, it's going to set our state and it should re-render our screen with our new name. So let's go ahead and test that out. And that did not work. So let's make sure, uh, I might not have actually restarted the server probably. Try why. So I'll refresh the server. Um, and then we'll just try that actually one more time before we go into more troubleshooting. So that didn't work. In our app.js here, let's just actually here, let's make sure that update's getting called here as well as on our app. So we'll just log console.log update. So first we're going to check out here and we'll go refresh and click update and it's not sending the message. Did I not add that there? Socket.emit update. All right, let's log in here. So I never refreshed the screen before because if you don't have to refresh, uh, Socket will auto reconnect every time the server gets reset. So bring out a terminal here once it loads up. So when we click here, it says sending update. Oh, it says update here, actually. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Probably should have just refreshed there, but yeah, so it worked. Um, and we'll try that one more time. While you guys are here so there's no point in um, logging anymore I'll just restart all this stuff here and then restart the server here um, so everything's set up correctly we're going to refresh the page so normally if you don't know what's going on you just start putting logs everywhere I would the next thing would put a log in the phone app to make sure that it's receiving the message Maybe that what the set state wasn't working correctly. I might have lost context. So if I click update, you can see that it updates the name on the phone. And you can just do that vice versa. Just add um, buttons or whatever you want on your phone that emits socket events up to your server at localhost 3000. And if you had this deployed somewhere, it's really easy. You just instead of doing localhost 3000, you would just put the URL where you deployed your app. Um, it's really easy to like deploy to Heroku. No, they accept Node apps really easily with Socket.io already built in. Everything it's so simple. But that concludes uh, real-time data transfer between web app and phone apps, so we can have a more connected world.